Hey friends, I'm Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. If you are looking for some real life dinner inspiration to feed you and your family, you've come to the right place. Just sit back, relax, grab you some sweet tea, and let me do the cooking tonight. Hey friends, welcome back. Long time, no see. I'm going to try to walk you through another meal here and together while I'm cooking it. I got to do this last week and I might get to do it again. My oven is still preheating, so it's gonna sound like mm, that. that's my oven. It, it's just loud when it's preheating. But anyway, let's get into it. This is a Tuesday night dinner. Okay, tonight, here's what I got laid out. You know, Tuesday night is my Bible study small group, so it's always gotta be fast. Got these red bag chicken breasts from Aldi. Got the oven heating up. These are fuller 100 degrees for like 40 minutes. So they do take a little while, but they're nice and thick and juicy. You can eat them as a sandwich. I like to cut them up and put them on a salad or just eat them by themselves, which I might do that tonight and just have like a big piece of fried chicken. But hey, it's done breaded. All the work's done. I like to do these. I think I will throw some macaroni and cheese on the side and then I'm going to fry up a squash and zucchini and some onion in it and a little bit of garlic and I think we're going to call it a night then. I had some leftovers from Granny's from my mama's house on Sunday that would have been good. I had a little bit of leftover uh, pinto beans and some cornbread but we ate it last night with that barbecue so I don't have that. And um, I ain't even going to throw any cornbread together. Like I said, some people will eat this on a bun. But let's get with it. Okay, we've got an addition to the menu. This is chipotle, no, chipotle raspberry sprinkled bacon. You know, I said we had that barbecue. And that was supposed to be something he was going to do on the smoker. But we just ran out of weekend. And I think he was going to wrap it in this bacon and like do a stuffing i hate we missed it but now we got this bacon that we got to use and he did get a good little deal on this i mean bacon's expensive but this is just a few little pieces so i'm going to cook this up tonight too i'm just going to cook it in the oven at 400 along with this chicken this said chipotle raspberry i think that's what it said mm -hmm. that's a fruit yeah but it's chipotle are you able to eat fruit? <laughs> Are you allergic to fruit? Bacon infused. <laughs> no, it's fruit infused bacon. Okay, I'm going to show you a neat way that I have learned to cut these squash and zucchini here. Now, we all love to just slice our zucchini and our squash. We've I love to do that too. Just do it like that. Dredge it through some milk or egg, and then flour it and fry it up individually. But really, I just don't have time for that. This is how Marshall, that Southern boy cooking, or country boy cooking, I'll link his channel down below. I love Marshall. But this is the way that his mama cut squash. You take notches out of it. And I'll get it going right here in a minute. And honestly... It just fits in the skillet so much better. You can get so much more fried up in your skillet. You just kind of do it down in notches like this. And I'm going to do my zucchini the same way. And then I'm going to put it in a bowl. Whoops, that got away from me. It looks kind of funny, but I swear this works. But I'm just going to cut my squash and zucchini both up like this. Then I'm going to put it in a bowl and add my stuff in there and just shake it all up. We're going to do our zucchini the same way. It don't have to be perfect. It's all going to taste just fine. Yeah, you can see it better with the green zucchini. You can see how I'm doing the notches. I will not put my onion in until a little bit later because I don't want it to burn. And I may, I have my garlic out, but I may just do some garlic powder and then I won't have to worry about keeping an eye on that garlic either. Cause I have a feeling that today is going to be one of those days where stuff is going to be getting away from me. It's just been that way. But I've got my cast iron skillet out over here. 
I've got some olive oil heating up in it. Then I'll throw some butter in it. When it gets heated, we'll fry this up. And you know, zucchini and squash go such a long way. This is one of each. And look at all that. That's a nice looking bowl right there. Especially since it'll probably just be me eating it. Okay, now let's put some salt and pepper on it. I decided last week when I was talking about making that broccoli, but like steamed, but nobody else would eat it. I thought now, you know, I need to cook stuff that I like. I always do, but I always try to make sure I've got something everybody likes and will eat. But I thought I need to also make some things that I like that other people don't. Just for me too. Now I'm going to take... This is about a fourth of a cup of cornmeal mix. And I'm going to grab about a fourth of a cup of flour. And this is just regular old plain old self-rising flour. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm just going to throw it right in there with it. And I'm going to take this lid and put it on here. This is another little trick that Marshall showed how his mama does hers. And I'm just going to shake it it upside down get it all coated look at that perfect okay I feel the heat let's give it a little better and yes it's perfect and the secret to doing this squash and zucchini like this is taking you like a slotted spoon and you gotta like sift your stuff off here you don't want all of that excess breading down in there. I'm gonna give it one more shake too. Okay, I just do mine like this. I just kinda sift it over the bowl, lay them down in there. Sift it over the bowl. You could use a big sifter, but I ain't wanna mess up a lot of dishes. I like the combination of the flour and a little bit of cornmeal, that little bit of crunchiness, you know, it's in crispiness that the cornmeal gives it too. And it's okay if you get a little excess, that's going to happen, but you don't want a whole bunch of just that breading in there. You don't want to move it around too much at first and the breading that you have come off either. That bacon is smelling very good too. Patrick will probably eat that bacon. He'll probably make a bacon sandwich. He'll probably have some kind of tater chips or something. He probably won't eat this. Maddie will eat probably that macaroni I'm going to make and some chicken. See, that's all that's left of my breading, so I didn't waste too much. And she may or may not eat this. I will have chicken, this, and some macaroni. I also have a salad to pull out too. So Maddie will eat salad too for her green veggie. And I think Callie's going out with friends tonight. So this is all of us. Okay, let's give it a stir. Let's see what we got here. Flip. Oh, that's looking pretty. I think my breading is good and stuck. Just try to spread it out the best I can. That's the thing about cooking stuff like this and fried potatoes in a cast iron skillet. You want everything to touch that cast iron and get crispy, but that's hard to do in this little bottoms. We'll cut up some onion and fix up the salad to go with it, and we'll keep cooking. Look how pretty and brown these little bits are getting. And I just remembered, I made a video back last summer, and it was called Cooking Like Mammal. And it was back when all the garden vegetables were coming in. And I take you to my local fresh fruit and vegetable market. <clears throat> and I shopped there, and I made a whole meal. And I did some fried squash in it, and some green beans, and some fried green tomatoes, and pinto beans. And I did some peach hand pies, too. So, I'll link that video in my description box. In case you haven't seen that, you can go and check that out, too. See how she looks? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to cut that way down there and just let it sit. I might even cut it off. Everything's almost done. That looks good.
And here's my big old plate. I just had a huge helping of that zucchini and squash and onions. That was so good, it hit the spot for me. I had a little macaroni and cheese, a nice big salad that was so good, and I ate one of those Aldi chicken breasts. Now I'm going to share with you pork barbecue. I have done this a number of times on my channel. This was just a pork loin. It was rather large, but I got it on sale. I just put it in in the morning, and I put some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And since it was large, I cooked it on high all day long. And then when I came home, I had put just a little bit of water in the bottom. And so I took the loin out and kind of poured that juice up and then I just began shredding it up. The reason I pour some of that juice off is because I just don't prefer my barbecue to be so wet like. I want it a little bit more dry and then add my sauce in. And I did spread just a little bit of barbecue sauce on the top of this when it was cooking. But once I get it shredded up, I add some barbecue sauce in and just stir it in, put the lid on it, and let it get all warmed up on it. And now I've got my cast iron skillet going with a little bit of oil and some butter. I'm still working through my freezer, using up some things, and I had another bag of hash brown potatoes that we had not used. So I thought I'm just going to fry those up to go with it. I always do them with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. Patrick was going to do this pork loin on the smoker, but we honestly just ran out of weekend, and he didn't get to do what he wanted to do with it. Since it was thawed out, I just threw it in the crock pot and made pulled pork barbecue out of it. Now, if you are lucky and have a granny, as we call her, my mom, that you get to have Sunday dinner with, you'll get these nice little leftover bags to bring home. And I am pulling out what I got, and I've got a couple pieces of buttermilk cake. I will make this very soon for you guys on my channel. It was my brother's birthday, and that is his favorite cake. And then I have a yogurt bowl full of leftover pinto beans. And then I've got just a hodgepodge plate of leftovers that she sent home. We have a little bit of cornbread, some tater tots and nuggets that was for the kids, some macaroni, and some hash brown casserole in there. So I'm just going to heat all this up, and everybody can just choose what they want, however they want it. So here's our spread once we've got everything kind of heated up. I just put everything on a plate and microwaved it and reheated the beans on the top of the stove. This is what I had. This is not normally how I eat, but I had the wonderful pork barbecue sandwich with some additional sauce some fried potatoes, and I went full on starches. I had a little bit of macaroni and cheese and some of that cheesy hash brown casserole. Now I'm trying a cracked out tater tot casserole that I have never had before. And I'm starting out by just cooking up a bunch of frozen chicken in my crock pot. I put it in there from frozen and I put salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And I put just a little bit of butter on the top of it till it melt down into it. And I was home today and I just let this cook for four hours on high. And then I just take my little chopper and start shredding it. Now this recipe I'm actually cutting in half. It calls for three cups of shredded chicken, so I'm just using, I used about two cups probably, and then eight ounces of sour cream, a 
It calls for one can of cream of chicken soup, so I'm just using about half of this can. And then I put the rest of it in a baggie and threw it in the freezer. I will use it on something else, I'm sure. And it calls for a one ounce pack of the ranch seasoning, so I'm using about half of this pack. And then I've got the cooked bacon pieces and I'm throwing in probably about half a cup of those. As far as cheeses, you're going to use probably a cup. I used a little bit more, but I've got some Colby Jack cheese that my husband had shredded up for me a few nights ago. And you're just going to stir all of this together. Now it calls for a two pound bag of frozen tater tots. I went ahead and used what was left in this bag. It was probably about, oh, it was probably a pound, a little bit more than a pound. And you're just gonna stir all this together. And you're gonna put it in a greased a nine by 13 pan and you're preheating your oven to 350 degrees. Just gonna spread that out a little bit, and if you want to, you can throw you some more cheese over the top of it, or just anything else that you think you might want in here. Just be creative and make it your own. And you're gonna bake that for 40 or 45 minutes at 350 degrees. And I am slicing up my veggies for the salad for the week over here while that is cooking, and honestly, I wished I had went ahead and made this whole recipe. I should have known we would love it. We love everything about it that's going into it. And I was thinking if I had went ahead and made the entire recipe, I could have just put half of it in a big gallon sized freezer bag, put it in the freezer, pull it out and stick it in the fridge to thaw and it would be ready another night. This was so good. Everyone loved it. We ate every bite of this little casserole between the four of us and some lunches. And the salad is great, always on the side. Normally, I always have some leftover makeover for you. This is no exception. I had that huge pork loin that I made into barbecue. And I'm still trying to get rid of these tostadas. So I pulled out just a bunch of fixins to go with this. I thought I would make a tray of some refried bean nachos and some barbecue tostadas. So I'm cutting up a green onion and a red onion. And that was pretty much all the work that I had to do this night. The rest is just assembly and reheating. You know I'm big on using my leftovers. So I'm finding me some tortillas in there that have not got broken up and just put them on a sheet pan. And then I did microwave this uh, leftover barbecue just a little bit, just really to get it easier to work with. You know, I'm gonna fill them full as I can. So I put a lot of barbecue on each one. Then I had some Monterey Jack cheese. I put a good amount of that on each one. And this barbecue sauce that we absolutely love, I'm just drizzling a little bit of that over each one of those. And that's all I'm gonna do to them before they go into the oven. Next, I'm gonna fix up a sheet pan full of just nachos. I've got a can of refried beans. I did them the same way in the microwave just to get them a little easier to work with. Just dolloped them out different places on here. Covered that in Monterey Jack cheese. I felt like it needed a little bit more color, so I pulled out some Colby Jack cheese and kind of sprinkled it around on there too. I take what is left in this jar of taco sauce and just drizzle it across the top. And then I'm just gonna put both of these in the oven. I set it at 350 and I cooked them about 10 minutes, looked in on them. They were pretty well done. 
and I just let them go a few more minutes to get nice and melted. And look how good they <laughs> look when they come out with the cheese melted and everything warmed up. And now it's just time for the fresh toppings. This was so good, such a great way to use up some more of that pork instead of just eating, you know, the pork sandwiches and all that kind of stuff over and over. Just make it over and you could definitely just made your nachos with the barbecue pork. But I just try to switch it up every now and again. I want to say a big thank you friends for watching this week and a big welcome I have a lot of people that are just showing up here for the first time I'm so glad that you're here too and I hope that you'll feel right at home leave me a comment below I love getting to know you I am probably still a little behind on my comments I was already behind and I had a bunch show up from three or four weeks ago so guys don't think I am not looking at them you know I do and I love to take my time and get to know you and respond to everyone I hope something this week has given you some inspiration and I hope you leave here with a smile on your face as always I appreciate your time so much thank you for watching I pray that you have a blessed week and I'm sending you lots of love from my kitchen